What is going on, dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, today, okay? It's a good day. Last night we got a ton, a million, a billion news uh, bits towards Yu-Gi-Oh. A ton of stuff. New master rules. New anime revealed. 13 or 15 new cards, however you want to look at it, a new format, whatever, everything, a ton of new stuff, right? But today I want to focus on Master Rules 5, a lot of people are calling it Master Rules 5, technically it's not the name, but whatever, everybody's going to call it Master Rules 5, um, Master Rule 5, pardon me. And so today I want to talk about some winners and losers of how this new Master Rule is going to work. Um, so if you don't know, real quick... Um, the how Master Rule 5 is going to work, and I believe it's set to come out uh, April 1st in the OCG and the TCG, but pretty much what happens is before we needed to use uh, Link Monsters to open up zones so that we could summon other extra deck monsters to those zones and our main monster zones, but now uh, Synchros, Fusions, and Xyz monsters can all be summoned in the main monster zones without worrying about opening up zones for them. They are per completely unlocked and where they can be summoned, which is very, very nice uh, for those decks. And uh, one thing that is important to remember is that Link monsters still need to open up other zones to summon other Link monsters. So Link monsters are held down by, uh, you know, the Master Rule 4, like, standard, you know, Link mechanic. As well as pendulums, which is very smart because I think if you don't do that to pendulums, pendulums could easily explode as like best deck in the game again. Um, you do have to open up zones to be able to special summon from extra deck, um, which is nice, a nice hold down for them. That's pretty much it for really what happens. And so it's pretty generic, si simple rule changes, which is what I like, but going backwards a little bit. So it's not getting more complicated for newer players necessarily, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, let's get started with some of the, the things, just whatever are the winners of this new Master Rule. And we'll start with Dimension Barrier, I just want to mention it real quick. And a couple of other cards too, um, that kind of just get a really awesome buff. And those cards are just anything specifically anti-meta towards Fusion, Synchros, Xyz specifically. Um... Because that's where this card will find a niche. I believe this card will easily make a comeback right into the um, side decks again. Uh, assuming some like synchro fusions and like Xyz deck become good again, um, this card becomes like a really good side deck card. And in pendulums too, or maybe Necroz is good. So there's other lanes. There's just so many decks this can be good against. It's not terrible going second, but it's amazing going first possibly forcing just a pass turn from your opponent on their first turn. Just so good, right? And just any card like this, Forbidden Apocrypha, and I'm sure there are some other ones too that are just anti those types of extra deck summoning mechanics that really can come back and shine um, like they did before. Moving on, we've got, <laughs> not heroes, I know I have Sunriser here, but the, the main thing here is just any deck that is obscenely reliant on fusion summoning. Because prior, you'd have to summon one fusion monster to your extra monster zone, and then you're locked out. So decks had to adapt to summoning uh, a link monster to open up zones so that they could summon multiple. And by then, you just use so many materials, so many resources just to get the link monster and then fuse that like you weren't even able to fill up all the zones. So it, it doesn't even end up helping in the end anyway. Um, so this could be any deck from GX area, any deck from after that that just is just super reliant on... Uh, fusion summoning um, here so this could just be anything uh, keep in mind I think one thing that's important to remember as we do this is some people are gonna blow this out of proportion and say like heroes are gonna be busted whatever a lot of these decks already got link monsters and they're like good right like ancient gears elemental heroes have cross crusader like these decks already have like solid fusion or uh, link monsters that they wanted to make anyway just as part as a part of their engine now and and so, yeah, you don't need the zones to be opened up, but they still have good effects that just extend you. So some of these decks already have Link Monsters like that, and so I don't think their buff is as drastic as people might think it is. But the decks that literally were just locked down to only being able to summon one monster from the next deck, essentially, uh, per turn, uh, those decks truly do get unlocked and uh, really can make a, you know, a possible comeback. Right there and obviously if we did fusion obviously synchros are going to be on here i have black wings here uh, that's like probably one of my favorite synchro decks 
Um, Black Wings is one of those decks that gets a huge buff. It's just one of those things where in Black Wings, you had a limited number of monsters you were going to be able to summon that turn in terms of just resources. And the first two kind of needed to go into a um, uh, Wii Witch's Apprentice just to open up zones so you could summon two more synchros. And like at that point, it's just not even good. Right? Like, you put two cards into just, like, a mediocre Link monster. And then to be able to even try and get, like, into some other cards from there, it's just, like, it just doesn't end up being very good. And it's just too many resources. But this is a huge, huge buff, uh, particularly for this deck and obviously some other ones as well. Karakuri just got good new support, and this definitely helps them. Because they did not get a Link monster, they got a new Synchro. So they definitely could make a possible return. And uh, we'll wait and see. And of course, if we looked at those, we have to look at XZ's monsters or mechanics decks that use XZ's. Um, one that I particularly want to note is this one right here, Zodiacs, because this is a deck for the last year and a half. I've been, you know, pushing like, why can't we get these cards back? Under Master Rules Four, this deck is hindered so much. The fact that they can't just start going XZ's, 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 XZ's. they have to open up uh, Link Arrows first and after that how many xz's can they even summon one maybe two and that's like not that great and then so like the ocg just got dried it back which is super interesting because i'm curious to see what the deck does particularly now that dryden isn't even banned anymore for them and how like it works together with this like unraveling of master rule four um, I'm curious to see where they go, and then not just this deck, obviously, but any deck made in the uh, XZ's era, on, uh, or it's just very XZ's based. I mean, Time Thieves were made this year, but they're still super XZ's based, and this is a nice buff to them. They haven't even ro risen to playable yet, but hopefully this helps them. Um, but yeah, any, any XZ's deck, same thing, like you could argue the same thing for all these guys, all three of these decks. Um, it's just nice for them, but also there could be decks that have already gotten a good Link Monster that means like they kind of want to go that Link Monster anyway, and so this buff isn't necessarily as drastic for those decks. But still, nonetheless, it is a positive thing. Next up we have some cool cards that uh, kind of dodge extra deck mechanics that really couldn't really shine in Master Roll 4. I'm looking at particularly Bahamut Shark and Ultimaya Zulkin. There might be some other ones as well, but these guys who just drop other uh, Xyz monsters out of the extra deck uh, for free. But with Master Rose 4, if you didn't have a zone opening up for that monster, you weren't going to be able to drop it. So Bahamut Shark already was a little bit specific, taking two level four waters. But combine that with the fact you had to set up Link Arrows, made it very particular what kind of decks could even abuse him in any way. But now I think he'll have a little more lane to shine, and I hope he does come back. Um, that would be really, really cool. And then Ultimize Zulkin, just dropping a, um, a Power Tool Synchro Monster, which is really nice, just getting you access to some, um, uh, what, don't think, doesn't Power Tool Dragon get you access to Equip Spells, It's pretty cool, or a level 7 or 8 Dragon Synchro from your extra deck, that's also very, very nice. <laughs> so, kind of the same thing here, I don't want to talk about that specifically, because, like, the main thing is, they do the same thing in, in dropping another monster out of the extra deck. Super quick and easy, but you don't have to open up zones anymore. So these guys also become playable. Like, I know Zulkin was, like, so hard to make a Master Rose 4. Bahamut Shark was just a little more specific because you it had to be only played in a deck that can put two level 4 waters on the board and open up zones like Dynamis being, like, one of the very few decks that can even support a, a card like this. So I'm really happy to see that they're both back, and hopefully we'll see them kind of shine a little bit more. And then we move to some losers, okay? We're going to start with some obvious ones, right? The obvious ones are generic Link Monsters. Because the game is not going to be as reliant on Link Monsters, any deck that is not, like, fully Link-based, these cards become just so power crept, right? Like, if it's a deck that can summon level 4 monsters a lot, why even play Security Dragon when you can just play Castell? Castell is a, has 900 or more attack points, he spins any card on the field, not just a, I think it's any face-up card on the field, not just a monster, and you don't have to worry about co-linking him. You don't have to worry about open up zones for him. He just, you can just summon him anywhere in your main monster zone and spin something. Like, in that instance, way, way better. Also, spinning is better than bouncing, in my opinion. Um, so, so many cards like this can get power corrupt. Now, 
obviously not in every single deck. I mean, heavy link decks still want to use like the nightmares for removal. Security dragon still be good in a deck that might play scapegoat or just can spam the board really with a lot of small monsters. Um, but in terms of like the decks that were playing them just because they weren't able, like it, it wasn't a good play to like clog your extra monster zone with a castell like that. Uh, but now we don't have to do that, and so that's a not. You're putting the same amount of materials as long as it's a deck that could put two fours on board and uh, then you can go off. Same thing with synchros. There could be some utility synchros people are going into instead of going into uh, link monsters or uh, fusions as well if it's that kind of archetype. So any generic uh, link that is just where they have a synchro that's comparable if not uh, better in terms of the resources they're putting into it will definitely see a downtick in probably price and utility. So um, yeah, sorry to those guys because I do like link monsters but now they're just not going to be as good. Um, and it, it's kind of a shame because <laughs> we just spent so much time making them. Konami did at least. Um, but still, uh, so I think Link Monsters will take a little bit of a hit here. Moving on. Any pendulum mechanic. Now, this one is, is, is not as obvious, and I don't think a lot of people will highlight this as, a, as like a route to think about it. Here's how I think about it. I think everything is like relative to where the game is, right? So you may look at this new mechanic and you say nothing changes for pendulums. Pendulums just stay the same. And I agree, for the most part, there won't be many differences for pendulums in the way they play. But when you just argue that like take away full link decks, take away decks that don't care about the extra deck, take away pendulum decks, and you still have like 60% of like all decks in the game, all those decks just got a buff just now. <laughs> This deck did not. So I think relative to the game, uh, this deck that's been tier, what, 1.5 for the last couple months, now every deck becomes a little bit better. All those matchups that maybe you f you play at locals, maybe you play in early rounds at regionals, and you see the first card they play, they drop a, a black wing card on the field, and you go, oh, easy buy. <laughs> this deck doesn't do anything. You can't necessarily say that for every deck now, especially with the new buffs, if you don't know how much they got buffed. And so... Um, just relative to where the game is, this deck becomes worse overall. It's not separating itself from the pack as much. It still might be a tier 1.5 deck. I would still assume it's a good deck. I'm just saying relative to some of these other rogue decks, it's not quite as good. Same thing with any link-based deck. I mean, really, like, links don't change at all. Really, like, at all. And so, same thing. Any of these decks that got a buff in this list, 60 to maybe 70% of the overall decks in the game... Uh, got better. This deck didn't really move at all. So, you know, there has to be some level of power creep or relative to the rest of the game, it's not as much better than it was before to all the decks below it. So definitely have to consider that in the end, even though they themselves are not directly affected, right? And the last one that kind of fits in that same vein is uh, decks that don't use the extra deck. Not particularly true Dracos, but they are one of them. You could look at Monarchs. You could look at... Um, uh, sub terrors, any of these stun decks, border stun, just general stun decks um, that don't use the extra deck, definitely take a decent uh, hit here. Not, not again, not directly, but it's one of those things where everything else is getting a little bit better. None of these are even tier one anyway, so these ones particularly could be in trouble. Just to more decks that are actually dangerous coming into the forefront, and uh, just more stuff that this deck has to watch out for, and all three of these decks actually have to watch out for, um, which is super interesting. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So um, obviously I might have missed a couple things here or there. Um, just in terms of, I don't know, there's just so much, right? There's so much that uh, like that needs to be taken into account. This is all speculation. This is only a couple what, hours removed from all these reveals anyway. Like 10 hours removed from all these reveals. Um, so obviously we might find out more things that might be affected for the better or for the worse after this new change a little bit more down the road. But this is just my first impressions of what I think will do better and what I think will do a little bit worse um, with these new uh, master rule changes. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you uh, if I missed anything. If there's anything that does take a particularly big, uh, decent sized hit from this new master rule and anything that takes uh, a nice buff, a nice a nice you know lift up from this new master rule change that I might have forgotten on here, absolutely let me know down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me in the future, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.